Hey everybody, Danny Rod here. Thanks for joining us. Is there a difference between your iron swing and your driver swing? Do you find that sometimes you can hit your irons absolutely beautifully, but your driver's not so good? Or maybe you hit your driver really, really well, but your irons are pretty shocking. Well, this was the case for a number of my students this week. I had one of them, Dave, was an amazing, ripping his driver, but when it came to his irons, oh, he was really struggling, striking the ground behind the golf ball, not getting any real power. So what we're going to do in this week's uh, golf lessons is we're going to cover how the differences in the setup. So exactly what you need to do in the setup with your driver and your irons. And then I'm going to give you some real simple in-swing things. What you, can you do during the swing that can improve the quality of your driver and your iron shots? Okay, so before I do though, if you're new to the channel and this is one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Press that little bell button next to subscribe button. You get notified every time I release a video just like this one. So let's start with the driver. What is the purpose of driver? Well, we want to hit it long, don't we? Ultimately, look, we've seen on, on, on the tour now, everyone wants to hit a longer driver. So to hit it long, you know, the TrackMan stats show that if you hit up on the driver, you will hit it long. If you hit down on the driver, you will lose considerable amount of power. So we need to do everything to try and get that ball up in the air. First thing, should be easy, it's on a tee, yeah? So what do we now need to do in the setup to encourage this? Well, we don't want the ball back in our stance here because look, if the club is an arc and the ball is back in our stance, we're going to catch the ball too early on the downswing. That's going to hit the ball on the way down and into the ground. We want it on the upswing here. So we want the ball, look where? Forward in our stance. So we're hitting on the up. So what we do is we push it forward. Simple way of getting this right each time. Get the ball lined up to your center. Take a tiny step to, to, towards your target and that's a bigger step away from your target here. That's your ball position set up. Then all we're going to do now is this. We're going to put the club behind. We're going to get the handle um, uh, opposite your lead thigh here, and we're going to get the head slightly behind the handle. So now we're all set up. Getting the head slightly behind gets us tilt in the body here and helps us create a launch pad to launch this ball up in the air. You'll notice here finally as well with the driver is I have a, a wider setup. My weight now is positioned 55% on my back foot, 45% on my front foot. Gets me set up here behind that golf ball to launch this ball up in the air. Let's have a look at this in action before we then look at the, ah, one more thing before I get into this. You've probably seen me rummaging, right? If you check out um, someone like a Bryson DeChambeau right now, or some of these big hitters, you'll notice as well in the setup, almost misses, and this is so, so important. We've just gone the technical things, but what is so important, you've got to get ready. You've got to get dynamic in this process. I see too many people when they're approaching driver, going through this checklist of stuff, but then just sitting down. Bryson DeChambeau right now is literally stepping up to the golf ball and going, right, come on, and he's been it's, it's a very different game now, you know, and, and you have to be too. If you want to add power to your game, you can't approach this, your shots with a very relaxed, elegant kind of the old style, put the tweed jacket on and what have you, and the classic swing. That is not going to cut the mustard in, in today's world. And also, it's just not great for golf swing. So get yourself ready, get dynamic, okay, in your movement, okay. I've got a video in the top right hand corner here which will help you um, kind of achieve that, but just Get yourself ready in a dynamic motion. Look at my feet moving here. I'm neurologically ready now to launch this drive. This is my setup done. Let's go. And away we go. That's driver. Now let's look at your iron. So with your iron setup, what we're going to do here is with your irons, we want to be striking down on the golf ball. Why? Because look, we want to, the difference is, is the ball's on the ground. We want to put the face on that golf ball here. That's the most important bit. We want to put the face on the ball. So what's going to encourage that? Well, if the ball is forward in a stance like driver, we're going to catch the ball where? On this part of the act. Well, the face then moves away from the ball and we hit with the wrong part. So we want the face hitting the golf ball. So we move the ball, look, slightly back in our stance. So what we're going to do is from here, I've got a 7-9 um, a here. So what I'm doing is 7-9 I like to have just ahead of center. My hands, by the way, never change. They're still opposite my lead thigh here. And I've just moved the ball back. And because I moved the ball back, what, what do we see now? My handle naturally looks like it's ahead. It's going to encourage more of a descending blow by moving the ball back. 
with other irons like your six, five, fours hybrids, just gradually push the ball closer and move it further forward in your stance. All that does is it gives you a little bit more time for the longer club to strike the golf ball, okay? So, mid iron here. Now, from this position, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure now, slightly narrower stance, and the weight now is the opposite. It's 55% on your lead foot, 45% on your back foot. Why? Because we want to naturally encourage this downward strike. Notice what that does as well. When I narrow my stance a little bit as well, it rather than having the shoulders back here now, creating this launch pad, I've leveled them off. So my sternum and everything now is more over the top of the golf ball. We drive my sternums behind the ball to hit up. With this now, my sternum's more over the top of the ball, maybe even sometimes in front to help strike that shot. So let's have a look at this in action before we then look at the in-swing thing. So get myself set in position. I feel like I'm ready. I'm going to put that face on the ball, not hitting up. I'm naturally going to go through that shot. Lovely. So that is iron setup, driver setup. Let's now look at some in-swing things with the driver and the irons that could really help. So back with the driver, how can we then start helping you hit up on the driver so we can get those longer shots whilst remaining accurate, of course. So we've done a couple of things. I've put a T-peg uh, in front of the ball here. This is gonna act as a simple exercise for you to look. If you come down on the driver, you're gonna, you're gonna get immediate feedback because you're gonna get hit the ball and then the T-peg. So it gives you a great kind of way of measuring what you're doing because sometimes it's difficult to know whether you're coming down on the driver or not. Particularly, by the way, if you find your ball's going sky high, it's often not because you, a lot of people feel like they're coming up on it too high. Just double check the top of your driver. If you start seeing marks on top of your driver, that's a sure signal that you're coming down on the ground. So just double check that. But a nice T-peg in front of your golf ball, maybe six to eight inches, hit this ball and avoid it. And then suddenly it'll give you the idea that you're coming up on, or feeling that you're coming up on the driver. We'll do that in a second. But Second or third thing, I want you to check a look at this picture from Golf Digest of Dustin Johnson. Look at the top of his backswing here, and I want you to notice the head position, okay? His head position is turned away from the target. That head position is hugely, hugely important. If you want to get hitting up on that golf ball, you've got to make sure that you're behind the golf ball at the top of the swing. If you're not behind the golf ball at the top of the swing it, and you're over the ball, how hard is it from there, look, to hit up on it? Very difficult. You're gonna to have to lean back. That is not what you want. You're gonna have a huge loss of power. Dustin Johnson is one of the most flexible players in the world and even he has to move his head to allow himself to complete the motion. So we've got the T-peg in front and we're gonna allow the head look to move away from the golf ball so that you can get behind it. Okay, let's have a look at that. And then I've got one more thing, which added 30 yards onto a recent client's game. We'll do that in a second. So let's have a look at this. So there's the T. I'm gonna allow my head the freedom look to turn away there on the backswing. Lovely. Okay, so what and how did I add 30 yards to a senior golfer swing actually. Stanley comes to see me. He wasn't carrying, you know, senior golf, he wasn't carrying it very far. It was his pretty standard carry. It was about 100 yards of driver, so not hugely far. But we had his 30% onto his drive. And we did it. This could be great for any age. We said, look, you've got to get behind the golf ball and you've got to get dynamic. Well, you could keep the T peg here. What we did with Stanley, and he was very skeptical when he saw this, I got him stepping away from the target. Movement is your friend. Movement here, it got him stepping away. That gets him behind the golf ball. As soon as the foot plants, it gives him a great platform to turn and go. It really opened up some flexibility for him. So how do you do this? Very, very simple. You get himself set here. I've got himself in a little stance and all I did really simply was this. Step and go. And that was enough for really him to get that uh, ball going. He really felt as though, oh, it's out of control. But the ball wasn't out of control and he had his 30 yards. Look at those stats. Absolutely amazing. I'm so pleased for him. Right, irons. What can you do with the irons? Let's have a look. 
Right, so what can you do with the irons? Well, the irons, look, we said, look, we want to strike the ball first. We want to strike down on the golf ball. So what can you do? We said, look, you've got the setup now. So what else can you do? Before I get into it, just remember, you don't have to remember any of this. There's a downloadable practice plan in the description box below. You download it completely for free and take it to the drive and range and practice. Go and download it. It'll really help. So we said, we want to strike down on this. We've got the setup in position to do that what things can get in the way. So I had another client, Dave, who was striking his driver good, but irons were really, really poor. Why? He did two, well, one major thing wrong. He was simply releasing the club, how he releasing it too early and getting this kind of flicky motion. Now he knew he, he wanted to get this kind of handle ahead position, which helps you to strike the ground, uh, the, the ball first and then the, gr uh, the ground, but he couldn't. He tried loads of things. And the reason why he couldn't is because his club face was wide open as it approached impact. Watch this, what do I mean by wide open? When he approached the glove here, that, uh, the, the golf ball, his club face was facing the sky. It was wide open, the toes pointing over here. Now, what should it be? Well, it should be parallel to your body line, but his wasn't. So as it approaches, you almost, your top hand here almost needs to feel like it's on top of the club here. His was too much underneath the club. Now the problem is, is when you approach the golf ball with an open face like this, if you were to try and keep your handle ahead, look at the club face. It's wide open, it's gonna smack it over there. So his body, just like yours is, was really, really smart. And as it approached here, what he would do is he would release the club to square it here, creating a flicky motion. This would create, this would force the body to go backwards, he would swing over the top, and he would either pull the ball miles left, hit the ground behind, or he would slice it. So what he needed to do was improve his feel of his club face as it approached the golf ball. And yes, it felt weird and he wasn't used to it. So what we did was this, we did two things. We said, look, first of all, let's just do a few movements where you actually feel like your top hand here is right on top of the club here and the club face is feeling like it's uh, facing the ground. Now imagine sensing throughout the entire golf swing that it's remaining what he felt was really closed, okay, or facing the ground. And he's we got, we're just making some swings where we got him feeling approaching impact facing the ground. Then what we did was this. Now just start to work the club through, keeping the club face square. Now look, you know that if you release it from here, the club now will be closed and you'd smash it miles left. So as it faces the ground, just practice rotating it here. And I got him curtailing or shortening the follow through. Why? Because he was so used to flicking it and releasing it. If I got him to finish in a follow through position, it was too susceptible for him just to kind of release and get that flicky back. So I actually want him to do an exaggerated drill, which is this. Feel like the club faces at the ground, turn around the body here, holding that finish here. Don't, it's, yes, that's wrong and it's too much, but he needed to experience this motion because he'd been trained to really release. So we got him swinging back, got him sensing where that face was, rotating through here, and then hitting some very small, just curtailed follow through shots like that. You can see I've taken the ball, then the turf in a lovely, lovely sound. So. That really, really worked for Dave. Just small shots to start with, just sensing where that club face was, turning through, holding that finish. Just be careful that where you could go wrong with this, and Dave did initially, don't push their hands towards the target. They work, look, around on an arc as you're doing this. You can't do this if your club face is wide open, you'll shank it, you'll block it miles to the right. Get the club face approaching in a better position, you'll keep your, it's easy to keep the handle head, easier to strike the ball than the turf. Whew. We've done a lot today, haven't we? So that is the difference between an iron swing and a driver swing, an iron swing setup and a driver swing setup. Just give you a brief summary. Again, you don't have to remember any of this, it's all in a practice plan down below, but let's give you a brief summary. Driver, what do we do? Driver, we want to hit up on the ball. We want to get it launching. How do we do this? First thing, be dynamic, yeah? You know, you've got to be ready. This is a, a ballistic golf club. We want to have power. Don't approach this shot by trying to remember just a checklist of stuff. Be ready, dynamic. And what is that checklist? Ball position is forward. Why? Because we want to hit it up on the arc. 
Your handle is slightly behind the golf ball and your head is slightly behind the handle here. All getting ourselves ready to strike up on this shot. Weight is 55% on your back foot, 45% on your front foot. We're all ready to launch this ball up in the air. In swing things with driver. We want to get behind the golf ball. Look at the picture of Dustin Johnson, the most, one of the most flexible players on tour, still has to move his head. Please don't try and keep your head down. It just roots it and it gets you staying over the ball. We need to get behind it. So allow that freedom here. Simple, another simple exercise I give um, uh, Stanley was to don't be worried about maybe getting a step initially. It's a great exercise to stay and feel that dynamism getting behind the golf ball. And third and finally, put a tee peg just as some feedback, maybe six to eight inches in front of the golf ball, hit your ball and avoid the tee peg on the way through. It will really, really help. Now, with your irons, again, just very simply, setup wise, we want to strike the, the balls on the ground. So we want to strike the ball first. We do this by pushing the ball more towards our center. I, I keep the lead hand, uh, sorry, the hands opposite your lead thigh, ball more central with our mid stance. Longer clubs like hybrids and long irons push them a bit further forward. That is your setup here. Weight favoring your lead foot, 55% lead foot, 45% here. There's a lot of things to remember, so just bear with me. Again, you don't have to remember all this. Get yourself set here. That's your iron setup. Then it's just a case of looking at what things can get in the way of that position of holding this angle. Again, if you, you cannot hold this angle if the club face is open. So feel the club face or the hand feel more on top of the, uh, the club as it approaches the ball and then almost feeling this kind of holding off position here as it works around the body. Eventually, of course, you'll get the feel this and you can let this flow, but maybe some curtailed follow throughs initially. So hope you really enjoy this training. It is a lot. There's a lot in there. So you, again, do it one step at a time. You, again, you're probably good at driver, maybe not so wise or vice versa. But if you know one of your friends or two that struggle with this or really struggle to understand the difference, please share it. It could really, really help. And of course, look, if you're new to the channel, one of your first videos of mine, please join the community by pressing that subscribe button and the bell. It's completely free. But until next week, have a wonderful golfing week.